I found it. It's the squid. Oh my, that's very good. That was the worst description of African food I've ever heard. Oh, fantastic. Hey everyone, Dan and Leslie back again. We are starting a new series today. I am so excited for this because truly I think I'm benefiting um, the most out of getting just to eat at a lot of different places on Disney property and Universal eventually. So we talked about this um, in our series moving down here to Florida, which we need to do a two month update very, very soon, but we are starting a dining series. So we are starting with table service restaurants and we are going to review every single table, table service restaurant on Disney property and then Universal property. And eventually we're going to hit all restaurants in general. I can't wait. <laughs> As we get started, um, you'll notice that we are in a different spot. This is part of our studio that we are setting up. We will show you all that at a future video. It is very, very much <laughs> a disaster zone right now. Like this section of the room looks okay, but the rest all of it- All of that does not. It does not, it looks awful <laughs> over there. But what we're gonna do is we are going to choose a restaurant every single week and we are going to rate that restaurant on five different categories. So we are going to rate it on ambiance slash theming, then also on service, uh, the food quality, the beverage quality, and then overall. The scale will be a five star scale, so zero to five stars. And then we will always start here in the studio and we will say where we are going and then we will go, we will take the camera with us, we will film some in the restaurant and of the food and we will insert that kind of in the middle and then we will always come back here to the studio to finish up and give our ratings and reviews. So I'm so excited for the very first edition of this new dining series that we're doing because it is going to be over at Gico at Animal Kingdom Lodge, which just reopened last night. For probably most of these dining reviews, it's gonna be the two of us. We will bring the kids on some of them, yeah. uh, but in order to conserve a little money and <laughs> um, maybe control the review process a little bit better, um, then that's kind of what we're doing. And when we go, we are going to pretty much ask the waiter, what is the best thing available in certain categories? And we are gonna try at least one of each of those, either the most popular or the best in his opinion is of drinks, appetizer, entree, and dessert. And depending how hungry we are, um, we will get one appetizer, one dessert, and then one or two entrees we will just see. Or maybe a couple of appetizers, one entree, and dessert. Who knows? I'm very excited about this. Yes, super excited. So let's go eat. <laughs> for the wine. I'm so excited. It's been a while since we've been here. This is a fabulous restaurant, um, but they are known for their selection of African wines. But that being said, they they got some pretty good looking cocktails in here. So let's just see what they say. So we already started off with um, a little warm cloth with rose water. It is um, a sign of welcome in Africa. So um, our hands smell all nice and fresh and clean. So I got the Seychelles Martini. Um, which is gin, a raspberry liqueur, and pineapple juice. Oh, it's very good. I have a feeling that you're gonna steal it though. So the other thing he recommended was the zebra teeny. I am not a traditional zebra teeny person or martini or chocolate martini person, but uh, here it goes. It is uh, very sweet, very chocolatey. It's got some um, Captain Morgan's rum, white chocolate, like a shot of espresso or something in there. Very, very good, but we may be trading. <laughs> oh my, that's very good. So we have some Egyptian bread and some giraffe bread, and then the butter has some black sea salt on top. That black sea salt um, just makes it pop. It's, it's a lot softer than I was thinking it would be. You see those big loaves and you immediately think like the crunchy, um, like sourdough loaves, and it's not. It's like super, super soft. We are trying the braised boar tenderloin, which, um, Looks amazing, and it comes with creamy pop or pap, P-A-P. No, super tender, not overly seasoned. That's phenomenal. The flavors are really good. It mixes well with the little pop or pop or whatever that is. Oh, 
fantastic. Yes. Cut it down the middle first. It's cooked beautifully. It is super tender. Oh, very well done. I mean, well prepared. I'm excited. Let me try this mac and cheese. Ooh, it's cheesy. Very hot, but delicious. This is incredible. It's the saffron flavored seafood tangine. Tangine. Might as well try the prawn first. Really good flavor. I don't really know how to describe saffron, but very good. Couscous has like a citrusy flavor. And there's also scallops and clams. I thought there was squid in here. I found it. <laughs> it's the squid. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So we got the Malva pudding for dessert. Um, it has a uh, kind of like an amaretto sponge cake, um, some kind of like um, cinnamon ice cream, bird cookie, red wine, um, our cabinet gelée. Oh, what am I looking for? Reduction. Reduction. And then this little this little bird nest stuff, which I can't remember what it is. That was the worst description of <laughs> African food I've ever heard, but it looks tasty. So. Okay, that looks good. Grab some of this. Oh my gosh. This is going terribly. Okay, there we go. Mm. I feel like we're gonna be fighting over the last bite here. Let's try this little bird cookie. It's actually pretty bland. It's not very sweet at all. The uh, sponge cake. Mmm. Warm, kind of like honey. And then the bird nest is made like a, with like a phyllo dough, kind of like a uh, like a baklava type of dough. Very good. Really good. You just keep holding that camera. Uh-uh. You get out of there. We have just returned from Jico, the cooking place, a signature dining experience at Animal Kingdom Lodge Jumbo House. But before we dive into our amazing review of this awesome restaurant. I just want to say that if you are looking to plan a vacation, please reach out to us. We do have an agency, Fantastical Vacations. You can find us over at fantasticalvacations.com or uh, find Dan and I every week on Addicted to the Mouse. So let's get into our experience. First, we are going to rate the ambiance and theming, which hands down is a five. Oh, five stars, hands down. We had an amazing server. He went through the restaurant and told us about how the blue in the ceiling represents the blue skies in Africa, and then the birds on the ceiling, that they are flying towards the sunset because that's what they do at six every day. Yeah, the 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 wall on the side of the restaurant is all like a sunset color, this yellow orange hue. Granite tables that were in the center represented the um, prod the, the crops. Crops? I'm not sure how, yeah. but anyway, he explained it beautifully, much better than we yes. are doing here. But <laughs> Even the water, right? outside the window yeah. was supposed to represent like Lake Victoria and it was just it was just really it, you could tell that every little piece of the restaurant there really was like thought put into making that restaurant something special mm -hmm. and tying it all back to Africa let's dive into service mm. um, so we had a phenomenal server tonight. Um, his name was Lambert. Shout out to Lambert. He is actually from Africa. Said he's been in the States for like the last seven years. If all the waiters and waitresses there <laughs> are as um, vibrant as Lambert is, unbelievable dining experience. He really told a story whenever he was describing the food in the restaurant. You can tell that he was passionate about his, his position there and it was refreshing. So Five out of five for me. Yes, definitely five out of five. Everything was um, spot on, very well served, plated. Um, whenever our drinks were low, he asked if we wanted refill. I mean, it was, and, and I don't think my water ever got below half before yeah. he was filling it back up. That's so nice. next are going to be the drinks. And the drinks hit a little bit lower for us. We did ask what um, his recommendations were for all of the food and drink categories. And he recommended- Seychelles you, Martini. For, yeah, that was the first one he recommended, and I asked for a second because we didn't want to try the same thing. So it was the Zebra Teeny for me. We ended up trading drinks because the Zebra Teeny was incredibly sweet. It wasn't bad, but it was basically a chocolate martini. To be fair, before we give this rating, I feel like what they're known for is their wines, and we yeah. did not drink wine, and we should have because that's really like they have like 134 different types of African wine yeah. that we should have tried that instead. Like everything else was like had a story and was themed to Africa for some reason. Yeah. And these were just normal cocktails. I'm gonna give them a two and a half. And I'm gonna say a three, so. Next is the food. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> so for an appetizer, we got the boar tenderloin, which was the uh. most tender. It was not gamey at all. It was not over seasoned. There was some seasoning. I mean, you could taste the salt on it. There... I think if it would have been more seasoned, it would have ruined it. I like know. it was just seasoned so perfectly. And then it was served on top of um, some- The pap. Pap or pop or something. P-A-P, yeah. not sure what it is. <laughs> Tasted like grits. And the mm. bread service he brought us, um, they called it giraffe bread, which looked Kind of like um like a what you would see if you got like a sourdough piece of bread and so I was expecting it to be like crispy and and kind of denser but this was like so light and airy and um, just kind of melted in your mouth. The bread was like it was kind of doughy, like it was yes. done, but it tasted kind of doughy. Yeah, uh, just phenomenal. It was really good. Um, okay, so then uh, he recommended the. Filet mignon. Uh-huh, oak fired. Uh, oak fired grilled. filet, uh -huh. yes. And then he also recommended the beef uh, rib. Short rib, yeah. Right, which we didn't really want, because we had just gotten the por the boar tenderloin for an appetizer, mm -hmm. didn't really want like three like red meat dishes. So uh, we had asked about the seafood tagine, which is a Moroccan dish. It comes out in this like, I mean, tagine bowl thing. My dish was the definite winner at the table for sure. So I got the filet mignon. It was cooked beautifully. Um, I eat my meat medium rare. And I mean, it was just very tender, very, very well seasoned. It was mm. served with a four cheese macaroni and cheese. The cheese was really, really dense and heavy, which was fantastic, but um, it was just a lot. I think the rainbow cauliflower could have been just a little more cooked for me. Yeah, Lambert knew what he was talking about because I agree, your dish was the winner. Yeah. The uh, filet was perfect. It was melted in your mouth. It cut super easy. The seafood tangine was, it was okay. Um, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't a standout dish like the filet was. So definitely if you go to Jico, get the, get the beef. They know yeah. what they're doing, yeah. <laughs> get the beef. Um, yeah. So I give mine a three and a half. I would say mine's a four and a half for sure. Like it was, it was really good. Desserts. Desserts. So we got one dessert. It was the dessert he recommended. Um, it was the pudding, the- Malva pudding. Malva pudding. So um, it had like a, a like a little bird's nest. Like shredded phyllo dough. Yeah, that. but it was so light and airy and just really paired well with the, um, little scoop of cinnamon ice cream that mm. was on top of it. So just that, that phyllo yeah. nest, the cinnamon ice cream, and that honey tasting sponge cake. That's what it tastes like to me. It, it almost, it was reminiscent of uh, like baklava, except like <gasps> cold with ice cream, but you eat all those together and that's yeah. kind of like that flavor that you get. So good, highly so recommend good. that. Um, and it it's just the perfect, it's not overwhelming, it's not a huge dessert or anything. I mean, I think probably four or five bites yeah. each and we were through it. Um, but the shortbread cookie wasn't all that great. It wasn't very sweet. All of that being said, um, I think overall, we ended up rating through all of that, we ended up rating this restaurant a 4.25. I think so, yeah. 4.25 out of five stars, highly, Highly recommend Jico. Yes. That is such a great, great, if you go, maybe skip the pre-appetizer drinks and focus on a wine pairing that they suggest, because I'm sure, I'm sure they're phenomenal. Yeah, and I think that that probably would have upped the rating if we would have, and that was maybe just poor choice on our our end mm -hmm. to get the, the cocktails as opposed to going for what they're known for. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Let us know if you are going to appreciate and like this series in uh, Disney Dining. We would love to continue, well, we are gonna continue it, but we'd love <laughs> to know if you like it. Um, and and we, where you want us to eat. Yeah, uh, we've, we've got several scheduled over the next few weeks, but we're looking to do one per week. Um, at, at some point, we're going to have to really plan out in the future because we're gonna get to some pretty hard to get ones, I have a feeling. Yes. Um, and then we want to incorporate some universal uh, restaurants in there as well. Yep. So uh, with that being said, you have anything else? Nope, so until next time. We will see you on the next video.